You know those watches that you see that are ridiculously expensive, mainly because of their brand heritage and prestige, but when you actually look at them, they just kind of look meh. Well, the watch we're looking at today is the complete opposite of that. So let's take a closer look. Now, before we go any further, do consider subscribing to the channel that really helps. So we're looking at the legendary classic Seiko 5 SNKL 23. There are a few factors that make this watch fall into this legendary category. Apart from that famous article that Houdinki wrote titled, a $75 watch that looks like a million bucks, one main reason for this watch being legendary is that they don't make the Seiko 5s like this anymore. In fact, the Seiko models that somewhat resemble the SNKL23 are often priced four to six times higher than this one. Because of the growing global popularity of the Seiko brand over the last few years, both the Seiko and Grand Seiko watches have been noticed to go higher in price. Because of this, Seiko is kind of shifting away in the eyes of the consumers as the true value for money brand, therefore making way for brands like Orient to take that place. Another factor is that Seiko 5 nowadays is basically just two designs or silhouettes, one being more sporty with the dive style bezel and the other one being a more everyday style option with the only different thing being added to each new release are just different color variations, patterns and textures. You can compare this to the old Nokia phones where each year they just kept releasing phones with different shapes, colors, and sizes. But nowadays all the phones are just these big black identical screens. But when you look at the vintage Seiko 5s all the way up to the early 2000s, each Seiko 5 had its own characteristic. Now in the case of the SNKL23, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad thing, rather just making an observation and highlighting the fact that makes this watch so special when compared to the new generation of Seiko 5s. But then it also brings us to another point, why this particular Seiko 5 as compared to the thousand others is so special. The impressive thing about this watch is not the specifications, but this is the one that has truly stood the test of time. When others eventually became boring, this one up to this day is still highly respected by enthusiasts of all calibers. The watch comes at a 38 millimeter case size, which is perfect for most wrists, especially when considering that this is a dress watch with its polished bezel and highly tapered lugs that are brushed at the top and polished on the sides, along with a standard flat hard lux crystal, which is much more scratch resistant and durable than traditional mineral crystal. But the most special thing about this watch is its dial. It has a tuxedo dial with etched pattern across the outer ring and a flat black center. The classic Dauphin hour and minute hands and the cherry on top is a functional dated window position at 3 o'clock with a metal frame around it. Around the dial we find applied metal markers and just between each marker there is a loom dot along with applied loom on the hands. Not the strongest loom but does the job for a dress watch. The small crown is positioned at 4 o'clock. It's not a screw down crown nor does it feature hacking nor hand winding, but this makes sense since it's a dress watch with only 30 meters of water resistance. And although it is small, it's quite easy to grab and operate. And that's just perfect because for a dress watch, I personally prefer a smaller crown that doesn't stand out. The movement in this watch is a Seiko in-house automatic caliber, the classic 7S26 with 21 joules, which is displayed through the exhibition case pack. Not as highly decorated as a Presage, but still good to look at. Like many modern Seikos, this watch also features Seiko's Diashock system for enhanced durability and has a 41 hours of power reserve. 
like most other people, I found the bracelet to be its only one negative. The bracelet isn't something special, it's not heavy, it's kind of flimsy and rattly, made of stainless steel with folding clasp and brushed side links and polished center links. It does what a bracelet does, but isn't really robust or durable. Even though the lug width is 17 millimeters, you can fit any 18 millimeter strap like the one I have right now. One thing to note is that this watch is an absolute strap monster. You can buy this watch and play around with the several different Melini's leather or suede straps that you can easily get online. Putting a nice leather strap on this watch just elevates it way beyond what you could expect. There's just something about this watch that keeps you staring at that dial. Yeah, this to me is definitely one of those watches. The perfect symmetry and depth of the dial and the natural fluidity of the case, the attention to all of the minor details. These are things that you don't even see in watches at much higher price point than this, let alone at the same price tier. You can't really get this watch at stores anymore. The only option is to buy it online. But even if you do without trying, I think it's a good investment because you can always sell it at the same price point because they're getting harder to find these days. But even if you're buying them new, you can still find them for around $100, which is a little more than the retail price of 75. So if you're interested even to just see how it is, I would say now is a good time to get it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do hit that subscribe button. Stay well, enjoy your watches, and I'll see you guys in the next one. You don't even sometimes see in watches at much mire, much mire, wow.